Mar Joseph special, I had reached out to a buddy of mine from Barbados, Carlos Alexander. We also call him Tony. I said, you know, Tony, I want you to give me your take on, you know, Shamar's performance in Australia. Now, Tony is an avid cricket fan. He said, cool. But then he also took the chance to remind me. He said, you know, it has been 50 years since Lawrence Rowe made his 302 runs at the Kensington Oval. And as I reflected on our brief conversation, I began saying, you know, it's true, there really have been many great moments in West Indies cricket. And so, following our special on Shamar Joseph, we said, hey, why don't we do something on an ongoing basis where we celebrate those moments in West Indies cricket? So welcome one and welcome all. My name is Son Dianansi, and this is Great Moments in West Indies Cricket. The name we would like you to remember for today is Lawrence George Rowe, also known as Yago. In March 1974, Australians Ian and Greg Chappelle became the first brothers to score hundreds in each innings of a test match. At the 16th Grammy Awards, R&B singer Roberta Flack took home the best record award for Killing Me Softly, while multi-genre influencer Stevie Wonder won Best Album of the Year for Inner Visions. In championship boxing, George Foreman TKOs Ken Norton in the second round for the WBA, WBC, and the ring heavyweight boxing titles in Caracas, Venezuela. That very month, 50 years before Shamar Joseph exploded at the GABA in Australia, West Indies cricket lovers would be treated to what Indian writer Abhishek Mukherjee describes as arguably the most elegant test triple hundred of all time. The batsman was Lawrence George Rowe, also known as Yaga. Here is an overview of his all too brief career. Fellow West Indians, wherever you are, and fans of West Indies cricket around the globe, please do not forget to comment, like, and share. You are being treated to great moments in West Indies cricket. Tell a friend, then tell a friend to tell a friend. So it's Lawrence Rowe down at the far end. And bear in mind, he's once made 300 against England. So Underwood attacking him with a slip, a silly point and a short leg. And that's a very confident, handsome way to get off the mark. No effort again. Perfectly timed shot by Lawrence Rowe. Lawrence George Rowe, born on January 8th, 1949, is a former West Indian cricketer renowned for his stylish batting. Making his debut for Jamaica in the 1968-69 season, he carved his name in history by scoring a double century and a century in his test debut against New Zealand in 1972, his record-breaking 302 against England in 1974 at Kensington Oval stands as the highest score by a West Indian at the venue. Despite a promising start, his career was marred by injuries and a controversial captaincy of rebel tours to apartheid South Africa, leading to a temporary ban by the West Indies Cricket Board. After his cricket career, Rowe settled in Miami and became a successful businessman. He was honored in 2011 when the Sabina Park Stadium was named after him. Now for the story on Lawrence Rowe's masterful triple century. We're going to tune into our AM and FM radios. So make sure you get that dial right. And please do remember to like, share, comment, tell a friend. Lawrence Rose 302 runs against England in the third test at Bridgetown Barbados 
1974, is a legendary innings that stands as a testament to his grace, power, and efficiency. Coming into the match, the West Indies were leading the series 1-0, with Rowe having made a significant impact with a classy 120 in Kingston, his hometown. The match began with England batting first, facing the West Indian bowling attack consisting of Van Burn Holder, Andy Roberts in his first match, Bernard Julien, Gary Sobers, and Lance Gibbs. A set of crucial early wickets and Rohan Kanhai's leadership saw England reduced to 68 for four. However, Tony Gregg and Alan Knott fought back, pushing England to 395, with Gregg's heroic 148 standing out. Rowe's innings began towards the end of the second day, marking the start of a historic endeavor. Day two, late afternoon, Lawrence Rowe's entrance. As the sun begins to dip, casting long shadows across the Kensington Oval, Lawrence Rowe, alongside Roy Fredericks, strides onto the field. West Indies are yet to score in response to England's first innings total of 395. The atmosphere is charged with anticipation. Rowe makes clear his intentions just moments after the start of the innings. England's pacer, Bob Willis, with a run-up full of purpose, releases a bouncer aiming to intimidate. Rowe, unflustered, eyes the ball with a predator's focus. As it rears up, he executes a majestic hook shot. Bang, whoop. The ball rockets flat and fast over the square leg boundary, most of its journey at head height, an audacious declaration of intent. The crowd erupts as Rowe's score moves swiftly to 24. Fredericks closes the day on a steady 24 as West Indies amass 83 without loss. Rowe is two runs short of 50. Day three, the build-up to a masterpiece. With Rowe resuming on 48, a palpable sense of excitement fills the air. Every stroke from his bat, whether it's a drive, cut, or hook, is a testament to his mastery over the game. Fredericks plays a supporting role until Greg's delivery sends him back, but not before the score has advanced to 126. Alvin Kalicharan joins Rowe, and a partnership of elegance and aggression unfolds. Kalicharan's classical technique complements Rowe's flamboyance. Together, they work in tandem to dominate the English attack, their bats responding with clarity to the varying probes of Captain Mike Denisis's bowlers. In the words of writer Abhishek Mukherjee, writing for CricketCountry.com, Kalicharan's strength lay in his classical technique, remarkable footwork, and textbook strokes. Rowe was graceful in a different manner altogether. He drove well, even on the rise or off the back foot. His back foot cover drive, his signature stroke, was something people would walk to watch. The partnership between Rowe and Kali Balloons, setting a new second wicket record of 249 runs for West Indies against England. Kalicharan falls for a well-made 119, but the foundation for something monumental has been laid. Day four, the climax. The crowd has swelled, with spectators finding vantage points wherever possible, their attention riveted on Rowe. He resumes on two on two, with the West Indies still trailing. Every run from Rowe's bat is cheered, every milestone celebrated with fervor. As partners come and go, Rowe's focus remains unshaken. He glides past 250, surpassing George Headley's record against England, and continues his march towards the triple century. Expectation builds as he nears the landmark. With a gentle push into the offside, Rowe completes his 300, an achievement that sparks jubilation in the stands, a tribute to the beauty of his innings. Eventually, Rowe's magnificent innings comes to an end, caught off the bowling of Tony Gregg. Rowe's innings of 302, crafted from 436 balls with 36 fours and the iconic six, was a spectacle of batting excellence. The ovation he received upon his dismissal was a fitting tribute to a masterful innings. The aftermath of Rowe's innings saw West Indies declaring at 596 for eight. The match eventually dissolved into a draw with England's second innings standing at 277 for seven. Rowe's innings was more than just statistics. It was a narrative of perfection, drawing admiration from teammates, opponents, and legends of the game. His technique, vision, and execution were unparalleled, making his 302 not just a personal triumph, but a moment of collective joy and awe for cricket enthusiasts around the world. The legacy of Rowe's 302 remains a high point in cricket lore, 
a reminder of the beauty and depth of the game and the extraordinary talent of a batsman whose elegance and prowess left a lasting mark on the game of cricket. So we reached out to Yaga, who is currently residing in the United States, wanting to know if there were things of note he would want to add to the story. Speaking to us over the phone, he added four rather intriguing bullet points. One, the knock of 302 was his first century outside of Jamaica. Two, the triple century was a chanceless innings. Wow, let's consider that. 436 balls and no chances given. Three, the great Sir Garfield Sobers visited his hotel room after the start of his innings on day two and predicted that he would get a big score. Didn't say how much, but was sure that Roe was headed to a huge total. Four, when Yaga and Fredo reached the ground at the start of day three, they were forced to enter Kensington Oval by squeezing through the fence beside the scoreboard. The crowd was that big and that excited. Yaga did grace us with his presence during the early days of the Bits and Pieces cricket podcast. So here's the man himself with a few words on batting technique. But in terms of the opening the batting, which goes for a lot of top batsmen, is that first you have to have good technical skills of an opener. You, you, are, you must be able to pick line and length quickly. When you when to play back, when to play forward, very quickly you have to make those kinds of strikes. You have to have a clear mind of the of the early the top three. If you're back in the top three, you have to have a clear mind in making your decisions very early in what you're gonna do. But as I said early on, you know the the, the main thing for me is to be able to judge length line, have a clear mind. You, you, you have to leave a lot. You can, um, after a while, you learn how to, to assess pitches as you go on and play on them around the world. Because most pitches around the world are different. The opener, the early morning, the condition is, is terrible. The first two, two hours uh, in the test match morning is always difficult to play. And the opener has to be able to leave a lot and consolidate himself and also push it along. The great Conrad Hunt was one who, although he, he was a great opening batsman, he was just there staying there. He was always a, a prolific scorer. He was always scoring while being there. He had all the, 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 the qualities of a great opener. And by the way, did you note that the Kensington Test marked the start of the career of the father of modern West Indies pace bowling, the man who would eventually be known as Sir Anderson Montgomery Everton Roberts. Do take note. Fellow West Indians, wherever you are, and fans of West Indies cricket around the globe, please do not forget to comment, like, and share. You are being treated to great moments in West Indies cricket. Tell a friend, then tell a friend to tell a friend. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and do tell a friend. Take care, and bye for now. Sport has long played an integral role in society, bringing people together and fostering a sense of community. Throughout history, there have been countless athletes and teams that have achieved great feats in stadiums and on playing fields, inspiring us and leaving an indelible mark on the world of sports. Such moments deserve to be remembered. Such achievements should be immortalized. Such instances must never be 